my parents had me when they were very young and uh, my mom grew up as a singer. Um, neither of my parents had any stage experience. They've never done anything like this. Um, but my mom did have some uh, experience singing and then she stopped. Uh, I don't know if it was how long it was before me, but she stopped. Then I, you know, I lived my childhood and I, this wasn't a thing. I took a, a musical theater class when I was in eighth grade and like I knew nothing when I look back at it, like my song choices, like what I did, oh my gosh, I knew nothing. Uh, the first solo that I sang, I sang Little Mermaid, Part of Your World, I was really original. And um, I remember distinctly having this thought. When I got up and I sang the song and you know, like we do this thing and it sounds so cheesy to say it out loud, but I had this thought, I was like, I was born for this. <laughs> Got a scholarship to SUU. Met my husband down there, which is great, who also, he's Josh, yeah, he's my director. Spoiler. <laughs> I trust Josh artistically. I know that he's capable of bringing um, beauty out of people, and he is, um, specifically with this play, I, I know that he is able to handle content this heavy um, sensitively and powerfully. Well, one thing uh, I really like about this play specifically is we see Zoe and her struggle. And then we see Jerry and his struggle with depression that's not his own. And we don't see that a lot. But that is its own, it's its own monster, you know? Like, how do you help someone when you, you you maybe don't understand fully, but you know that they're feeling that, and like, how does that affect you? You know, I had a, a big life-changing experience when I was a young teenager um, with my family and some of my, my mom's friends. My, mom, my mom's friend died by suicide when I was a uh, Oh, I don't know anymore. 13, 14? I was pretty young. And I mean, and we had a lot of other stuff going on in our family at the time, and it was just like, jarred everything. Depression and suicide was there. Really, when I got through those years that shaped me into the person that I am now. And I, and I do have my own struggle with, um, with depression. And it's, it's always there, you know? We're really fortunate and we're lucky that we're, we're starting to break the stigma and there's this conversation and it's so important. And we just gotta keep it going. Ladies and gentlemen, I am so proud to produce Note to Self by Kate Wiley, directed by Josh Durfee. Oh, sorry. Thought I was alone. It's worth every step, though, isn't it? Sorry, I'll leave you alone. It's gorgeous up here, though, isn't it? It's a perfect day. I haven't been up here in years. Wasn't expecting to see anybody up here in the middle of the week. You know, you're sitting awfully close to the edge there. Can you do an old man a favor? Can you scoot back a little? <laughs> Wait, where's your pack? Where's your water? You know, I'm not too old to climb up there and grab you. Get down, right now. 
<laughs> no. You know, the animals would get to you before anybody found you. It would not be a pretty sight. Leave me alone. He's not worth it. Do not touch me. No, 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 I won't, I won't, I swear, I swear. I'm, I'm just gonna stand here. I'm just gonna stand back here and talk to you, if that's all right. I, I'm not used to hiking alone. And I think, I'm afraid I've lost the gift of silence. <laughs> I usually uh, hike with my wife. She wasn't much of a talker, you know, kind of like yourself. She would let me gab on and on. You know, I, kn I know she didn't listen half of the time, but that's all right. You know, long marriage, you don't need to listen to every word. And I'm sure I repeated myself a few hundred times. If you fall, if you fall, you're going to ruin my day. You're, you're going to ruin my life. Can you stop? And yours. You're so young. Can you stop? No. No, I'm not going to stop. Not until you come down. The name's Jerry, by the way. Come on. Come on. Why did you say he's not worth it? I just thought a boyfriend or some idiot who's done you wrong, someone who's hurt you. You don't know me. You're right. I'd like to. I really would. Will you talk to me? If you want to talk to me, you need to come over here. No, I'm scared. I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> but you hike above tree level. I think you're full of it. Well, you're not the first person who said that to me. What did you say your name was? Oh, come on. You can't be this angry at anybody. I'm not angry. Then what? What are you doing? Nothing. Thinking. Thinking of jumping into a 1,200-foot canyon? I'm allowed. You believe that? Allowed to take your own life? It's mine. What about everybody else? <gasps> oh, my oh, arm. Sorry, sorry. You, you, you hit your arm hard. I'm sorry. Sorry. I think you may have broke it. Even though I'm not going to let you up until you promise me you're not going back to that edge. I mean, I'll, I'll use my straps and tie you down if I have to. Ow! Oh, how can a young woman like yourself be so in so much pain? Because you're lying on top of me! What if I hadn't hiked up here today? What, what if I'd stayed in bed? What are you, God? No, Jerry. You're welcome. How do I? How do you know that I don't have some horrible disease that I only have a few months to live and don't want to die in a hospital? Well, I understand you're very angry at somebody. Oh uh, no, I'm not. I'm not oh, angry. Oh, 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 my mistake. My mistake. Can you get off no, of me? No, not until you promise. No, my arm is killing me. Get off. Not until you promise. Okay, I promise. Could have given me a heart attack. That's a terrible thing to do. What did you say your name was? I would like to know who I'm furious with. Or who's going into shock. Here, water, drink it. Zoe. You're called Zoe, and you want to throw your life away? That's a good one, kid. That one just takes the cake. <laughs> I'm the one who just lost my wife, and you're, you're up here in your Patagonia fleece and perfect teeth, looking over the... Uh... Okay, enough. <laughs> if, you, if you'd made me, if I'd lost you too... I'm sorry. About your wife. Yeah. Are you done with this cliff business? Good. Glad to hear. You're just so young. You just don't understand how fast it goes. How can you have so much anger? You want to talk about it? Here, get some sugar in you.
better. Why does everybody think it's about anger? It's not? No. Well, your parents would never get over it. It's not about them. Well, they still wouldn't. It's not about anyone else. I'm not punishing anyone. I don't even want to die. I just don't want to live. Didn't. Fine. You know, they would blame themselves. Well, maybe they should have thought about that when I was little. Parents don't always get it right. You think? We raised two boys. We made plenty of mistakes. But you listened to them, right? If they told you something awful, you listened to them and made it stop. They're supposed to make it stop. Of course. They didn't listen to me. Well, they were wrong. You're left with no self. Not a sad or angry self, just nothing. A hole in the middle that hurts all the time. And nobody cares because you're not really there. Death feels like a friend. A promise you carry around in your back pocket. You can take it out and look at it whenever you want. And it looks like hope. And it's yours. And nobody can take it away. Sounds like a heavy burden. It's not a burden. It's a gift. I guess you have to be a depressive to get it. Uh, sort of secret handshake? My wife had depression. Did she ever try to kill herself? I never asked. I've, I've thought about it, you know, since she's died. I know, she's had bad days, months. The meds helped, some. Work. She mostly got up for her work. Did she ever sit in the bathtub with a razor blade? I hope not. Looks like a terrible place. You know, like where you were, all alone. I hope she never felt that kind of alone. I hope she knew I was there. Why would anyone marry a depressive? <laughs> Are you nuts? Sorry, no pun intended. But if you had known her, I was the luckiest man for 35 years. Susie was the most genuine person I've ever known. Gorgeous, smart, and funny, really funny. Except for on her bad days. But when, when those were over, sometimes she could even laugh about those. Now you're alone. That sucks. Yep. I guess I haven't, like, said anything to you. Might want those. Thanks. You know, you said you carry suicide in your back pocket, like for comfort. Well, I carry this. It's a note my wife wrote. She was a bit of a poet, Sue was. She wrote it when uh, they found more tumors. And she decided to stop chemo. She decided to stop fighting. It's a beautiful note. Can I give it to you? She would like you to have it. One amazing depressed woman to another. Self. Today, Today is, is not, not a, a good, good day, day to, to die. die. Yesterday might have been. Tomorrow for sure. Not today. Not today. Today, today is, is a day, a day to, get, to up. get up. Remove the covers, put both feet on the floor. Drink coffee, eat, get outside, greet the sun or the clouds. Whatever the sky is, look, look at, at it. it. Understand it's bigger than you. Much, much bigger which makes you just like everybody else, believe it or not. You don't, you don't get, get to, to die, die today. today. You don't even want to.